Welcome to the kit review from the Mile High Scale Modeler Channel. This is the Ravel Ford GT40 number 2 kit in 124th scale, kit number 7130. This kit is mastered based upon the Sebring 1966 Ford GT Mark II. This kit was designed and initially distributed by Fujimi. And here we can see the kit repackaged of the Ravel kit. Let's have a look at the box art for this model kit. We will then move to the opening of the box, showing the contents of the box, and then take a deep dive into each individual sprue. This kit review, along with all others I produce, are to be informative to the viewer like you to help you decide if the current prices you are seeing for this kit are worth it. Let's go through the box quickly and then deep dive into the contents. For products that I use to suit my building needs along with my airbrush setup, information and links can be found in the description below in this video. Let's start our deep dive with the instruction manual. The bottom of the front page starts off with step one. Step one, the radiator control arm and other parts are installed to the chassis pan. Step two, the photo edge seat belt buckles are used to build the seat belt harness. Step three and four, the interior is built along with the dashboard and gauge cluster. Step 7, 8, 9, and 10 all entail the remaining chassis work along with the wheels, tires, and engine transaxle. Step 11, the velocity stack and engine cover is installed. Step 12, the clear parts and body parts are installed. Steps 13, 14, 15, and 16 are the remaining steps on installing the body of the chassis and finishing up any remaining installation of parts to the body. The bottom of the page identifies where to place the decals. Deep diving into the kit, let's continue with the decals. The decal sheet is basic for this kit as to be expected with the GT era cars from the 1960s. Very minimal in what was required as it was all about the horsepower and speed. The kit comes with photo etch. The rear grille, seat belt buckles, and other minor parts can be found on this sheet. The wheels are paired correct for the 66 with the knockoffs. This is molded in an aluminum color and not the typical chrome we find with many of the other kits from Ravel. The tires have a nice tread pattern to them. The squeeze test shows these tires have not hardened over the years and are still very usable for the kit. The sidewalls do not have any manufacturer information like Goodyear or Firestone. The front tires have a smaller width of a profile compared to the rears to give the kit a more fierce look. These are the poly caps to help install the wheels to the chassis. This is what we find with many of the flat box style kits from Fujimi, Tamiya, Hasegawa, and Aoshima. Here we have a single metal axle. Here is the clear glass parts tree. A lot more glass than what I was expecting for the kit. This is very detailed glass including the side windows to enclose the interior. If you are enjoying this video, please hit that like button and comment below if you have built this kit and any issues you had along the way. This next parts tree includes the interior tub, side exhaust vents on the body, and other parts. The dashboard is well detailed and can definitely make this kit stand out if done well given the size.
The final part sprue can be found having the chassis pan, racing seats, engine transaxle, brake calipers, and rotors, along with the suspension, steering wheel, and pedal cluster. I am surprised by the minimal parts trees in this kit, however with this being a Fujimi kit and initially a curbside, I feel this is actually adequate to the amount of sprue you would receive in a normal kit. Just like the many other Fujimi kits that are out there, this is no exception to the quality Fujimi puts out based on the master craftsmen they have. Very little mold lines can be found on this body and it being a one piece at that. This was a win for Ravel to work with Fujimi to obtain the rights to reboot this kit and mass produce under the Ravel name. The body lines and the attention to detail is hands down. There isn't anything I can find that would require any sort of work on the interior such as sink marks or mold lines. This is an overall great kit from Fujimi, and like I said earlier, Ravel made a great decision in obtaining the rights to package this kit under the Ravel name. If you would like to be notified of further content I produce, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't, and hit the notification bell. Being a subscriber is one of the great things YouTube allows viewers like you to do for free, and it helps content creators like me produce more quality content for all of you.